Peter Fury is a man of undeniable honour, guided by old school values, and has emerged as a world class boxing trainer and mentor. Respected both within the boxing community and beyond, his present success conceals a dangerous path that led him to this point. After making his fortune as a self made millionaire in his early 20s, Peter transitioned into criminal enterprise and became a leading crime figure in the UK, an endeavour that resulted in nearly a decade of imprisonment in some of the country's toughest facilities. In this video, we will delve into Peter's fascinating life, from its humble beginnings to his current triumphs, drawing from hours of interviews he had participated in and extensive research into various news articles that have chronicled his journey. Peter Fury talks of his early life filled with fun and adventure in the open fields in a traditional traveller way, moving from place to place, finally settling in Manchester when Peter was 13 along with his brothers. The financial means of the Fury family were modest, but what they lacked in material wealth, they more than made up in love, hard work and devotion to each other. Peter speaks of his childhood with warmth and gratitude, recounting nothing but good memories. He attributes his positive upbringing to his parents, Huey Fury, and Sissy Patience Fury. His father, Huey, and mother, Sissy, worked tirelessly to keep their children clean, well presented and fed, even when money was scarce. They instilled in Peter a sense of integrity and an appreciation for hard work values that would guide him throughout his life. In Peter's own words, they were the best parents in the world. Growing up on old champion bare knuckle fighter, Uriah Burton's caravan park in Manchester, Peter would spend a lot of time with Uriah working and being taught, taught the art of fighting and training. Their relationship, although not blood, was close and it was clear Uriah took a shine to Peter and there was no better mentor that a lad could ask for. The King of the Gypsies, Bartley Gorman, a, a distant relative or maybe close family friend of the older Furies, talks of Uriah Burton in his book saying, when I was 16, I admired only two fighters, Rocky Marciano and Uriah Burton. Everyone had heard of Marciano the world heavyweight champion who never took a backward step and never lost a fight. But Burton was known, known only in the secretive world of the travellers, a name uttered in hushed tones. He was an ogre, they said. He had the strength of five men. He beat opponents two at a time. He would stop at nothing and fight to the death. They were the, the mutterings that within the travelling community spoke of Uriah Burton, showing what a mentor young Peter had. And we'll continue with the story. Peter talks of him and his brothers visiting many different boxing gyms throughout their young life and would regularly meet up with cousins and aunts, but recalls his oldest brother, Huey, being the most dedicated to boxing and the history behind it. He lapped up everything boxing, whereas Peter could really take it or leave it and was busy getting into scraps outside the ring, being a hot-headed young man. As Peter grew older and his, his entrepreneurial spirit manifested and he earned his first money shoveling and selling horse manure, he talks of feeling like a millionaire making his first bundle of cash from a guy willing to buy as much manure as he could shovel. This humble beginning was merely a stepping stone for a man destined for remarkable achievements, but was an insight into his character and his approach to hard work. If there was a pound note in it, he would put the graft in, shoveling shite or not. Peter's driving determination led him to the world of buying and selling cars and caravans, eventually venturing into the property and land market. His success was extraordinary as a young man, and he transformed his humble beginnings into self-made millionaire status. Peter did all the expected things, marrying his wife, Maureen, buying a lovely home, having kids and looking after his parents. Yet despite these achievements, a desire for new challenges and even more wealth led the young man down a darker path. Driven by an urge to test himself, Peter entered the criminal underworld, eventually running complex drug distribution networks from Belgium to the UK. His operation was strategic and far-reaching, and he talks of being in charge of up to 100 men and turning over 2 million a week. He openly admits of having a violent nature and enjoyed dealing with other dangerous men who crossed him. He talks of running protection on restaurants and businesses, establishments, and being in control of other serious crime. He does say that the actual establishments that he did offer protection for wanted that protection and were glad of him because they were quite rough areas. But even though he was into crime at a high level. It was a seedy environment. And he said he could, take, he could make millions, but also lose millions, as that's the nature of that kind of insecure business. At this stage of his life, Peter, uh, in his own straightforward manner, makes no secret of his character at the time. Although he did hold important morals, he also had a violent streak and an uncompromising approach to criminal business. If you crossed him or took him on, you'd better come prepared 
And he didn't dish out all the work to his huge firm all the time. He would quite easily doorstep people himself who had challenged him. Peter also touches on the treachery and disloyalty of certain friends who betrayed him during that time, which is in stark contrast to the unwavering loyalty to friends throughout his life, whether in crime or boxing. In fact, a big dangerous guy who had put himself on offer to Peter to be his number one enforcer was one of those who turned traitor in the end when everything fell out of bed and the serious organised crime unit sting was put into place. I think it's important to show how Peter was the complete opposite to his number one enforcer. And loyalty was one of the most important things, as he showed when effectively saving a friend's life. Peter talks of saving his friend, who was being tortured over an alleged debt in a house in Spain. It's not clear whether this was whilst he was still involved in crime or after, but Peter went to visit the man to discover he was being held hostage in his house by a violent crew that Peter knew. Peter was invited in and started getting to the bottom of what was happening. It appeared some big deal had gone wrong and the man in question was being blamed and he was in a terrible state after the beating he had took. Peter challenged the theory that they had and vouched for his injured friend in a back and forth tense negotiation. Eventually, Peter Fury even offered his own millions in collateral if he was proven wrong and the man was guilty. He did manage to save the man putting his own head on the line, but was proven correct. It goes without saying that he has Peter Fury to thank for his life. Peter's criminal activities eventually caught up with him, resulting in a 10 year imprisonment as a AAA cap prisoner and a million pound payment to the government. This was down to the disloyal people in his firm who had helped the police in their sting. During his time in the toughest prison across the UK, Peter talks of hard times facing the reality of his situation, but he still didn't suffer fools lightly, serving out many beatings to people who tested him or acted in a bullying manner. He also recalls strong friendships with serious faces across the UK, including the late Mickey McAvoy of the Brinks Matt robbery, a man well respected and feared in London and throughout the UK who ended his years doting and caring on his poorly wife. After his wife passed, Mickey, some say of a broken heart, died not long after. One prison fight incident Peter recalls was a dangerous Jamaican guy who was in for serious sexual offences, who other prisoners were wary of due to his physique and tendency of violence. Peter describes the fight not lasting long and the man being taken out of prison on a stretcher to hospital. On another occasion, two wing hard men attempted to take Peter's phone card, leaving uh, and Peter left one unconscious and the other chased to his cell, locking himself in before he could unleash hell on him. On Peter's release from prison, he moved to Spain and spent time in various places abroad. And it seems he was still in the middle of transitioning from crime to a straight life, but was battling proceeds of crime acts and a further sentence, finally settling on a million pound fine from the government and a short prison stay. When a life marked by success, crime and then redemption, with a life marked by success, crime and then redemption, Peter's journey took another remarkable turn when he entered the world of boxing. His brother, John Fury, jailed for gouging a man's eye out in a car lot fight and the tragic death of his brother, Huey, whom I believe died um, in a caravan accident, led him to the sport in a professional capacity and it quickly became clear that he had found his true calling. Peter's strategic mind and resilience made him a natural boxing trainer. His most famous achievement coming when he guided his nephew, Tyson Fury, to a stunning points victory against Vladimir Klitschko, the long-reigning heavyweight champion. Peter Fury, Mick Hennessy, Tyson, John and the rest of the team achieved great heights on the journey to the title fight. And on the night, no one gave Tyson much of a chance against the big punch in Klitschko. The remarkable points victory was blighted by the subsequent controversy of the drug scandal and Tyson Fury's subsequent battle with mental health and his split from Peter. Peter's commitment to boxing extended beyond his nephew Tyson particularly to his son, Huey. He trained Huey Fury to become a top heavyweight, fighting against some of the division's most formidable opponents, including a narrow points loss to Joseph Parker for the heavyweight championship. Another boxing highlight of Peter's career was guiding Savannah Marshall to world champion. This accomplishment underscores Peter's ability to nurture talent across gender lines, making him a versatile and highly respected figure in the sport. Although leaving crime far behind him, Peter still is loyal to people who were close to him then, and have also changed their life, including Daniel Kinahan, when he was heavily involved with MTK Global and boxing. In fact, whatever your views on Daniel Kinahan, Peter Fury was one of the only people to speak out about his friend in positive terms, unlike other boxing characters who ran to the hills on the US government classing Kinahan as an enemy of the state, on par with triads, Colombians and Italian mobs. On a family level, there seems to have been an unfortunate fallout between himself and Tyson Fury, which has been kept closely guarded within the family but seems to have stemmed from Tyson leaving Mick Hennessy behind 
and perhaps to do with finances. Peter had made no secret to his loyalty of his loyalty to McKenzie, and the consensus is it has something to do with that relationship breakup. Peter Fury's life is a tapestry of ambition, success, failure, redemption, and transformation. His journey from self-made millionaire to criminal figure and finally to a world-class boxing trainer is nothing short of remarkable. And Peter is the first person to admit that criminal path was the wrong one and is an advocate for youngsters growing up to stay well clear of crime. And that's it, guys. And just to give a personal note, I don't actually know Peter Fury myself, but I've got friends who do, and they all speak very highly of him. And he is, as he comes across, and I thought it'd be interesting just to put all these pieces together that I'd listened to and read into a little mini documentary. If there is any other people you would like me to cover, um, please let me know in the comments. And I'm happy to add them to the list. Take care.